as far as I can remember, I said I wanted to be a, a doctor. I like, like the science, I like technology, and I like interacting with people. Being a physician brings the science and technology and the interacting with people together in, in one job. In college in Western Pennsylvania, I studied molecular biology there. I took a lot of psych classes. It was kind of like a pre-med track and rigorous academics as well. But I initially thought of myself as like a family physician. But I found out about biomedical informatics when I was in residency. I had already been helping residents learn at the bedside and learn with iPads. And then I heard of this training program for biomedical and clinical informatics that was kind of a newer thing nationwide. And it sounded like, like hey, this is exactly what I'm already doing. Um, and so I checked more into to the program. I guess I thought it would be just a bunch of people that are just as dorky as I am that were really excited about you know, caring for patients and, and making things in the healthcare system better. The professors that I had, it was exciting to see people with this background be as excited about things like clinical decision support as I was. And those people being successful and implementing change across health systems, you know, actively. So I think just getting to work with people that I want to be someday is pretty awesome. Something else that's really been helpful. The program allowed me to take classes at you know, the business school and at the Kennedy School the government and meet people across Harvard University. And I think being able to bring those various aspects of healthcare, the, the policy aspect, the, the business aspect of healthcare, um, all in one program is not uh, something that I know is possible in, in anywhere else. Um, and I think that's led to exactly what I'm doing now. Now I'm a pediatric hospitalist at Boston Children's Hospital. That's some of my time. The rest of my time is dedicated to clinical informatics and kind of quality and safety um, at Boston Children's. So I, one, work on a team to disseminate best practice guidelines across the hospital through our electronic health record and through uh, kind of mobile applications. Um, and then I lead a group for clinical decision support at Boston Children's. So taking a look at the data behind a lot of the kind of alerts and, and suggestions that we make through ordering and making sure that we're not causing any cognitive overload to our providers and not having alert fatigue happen with our providers and making meaningless alerts. I think now I'm able to interpret data and be confident in my interpretation of the data because I'm much more familiar and comfortable analyzing these data sets and knowing when to use those skills from the biomedical informatics program to make sure that the whole hospital is taking care of uh, these patients in, in the best way that we know how to based on, on evidence. Um, you know, Don't tell my boss, but I'd like to be uh, the CMIO of, of our hospital. I think the most rewarding thing is when I am part of the team that makes a change that affects either our patients or the or the doctors I work with and I hear you know that people are happy with with that change um, you know hey it's easier for me to take care of my patients now or hey I gave my patient the right antibiotic the other day because of that app that your team helped deploy across the hospital my research interests are patient confidentiality and the way that the pediatric patient interacts with their own health data in the electronic health record and so, you know, when you go to see your pediatrician, there's always the time when the pediatrician asks the parents to, like, leave the room if you're, you know, an adolescent patient. And, and that way, you know, the doc can have, like, the, you know, the sex, drugs, and rock and roll part of the, the history and physical exam. And we just haven't found a good way to tackle that from a national standpoint. There's not one policy across the country. There's not one policy across a state. What kind of data a patient can access from their own electronic health record and what kind of data a parent of an adolescent can access. We have a confidential note type um, that kind of allows the patient to talk to their doc and not have their parents see that in the EHR. And I've done a lot of uh, research on who's been using that and why people have been using this confidential feature we have in our EHR in hopes that people use it most effectively. The work I do will directly affect you know, both clinicians and, and patients. When you go to medical school and you know that you'll be you know, prescribing medications to patients, you know that you'll be um, you know, tapping their knee to check a knee reflex, uh, but you don't know that you're going to be um, you know, creating a group of 
you know, antibiotics that the physician is choosing from, that your colleague is choosing from uh, when they're admitting a patient with pneumonia, or that they're, you're going to be creating an algorithm or um, in the background that will recommend a type of VTE prophylaxis for like blood clots in the hospital. So touching patients, not just the ones that you're seeing, but you're touching patients that your colleagues are seeing. I think that's what's you know, really cool.